they said that they didn't want me to take coaching badges because they were afraid I'd use it to leave to another club. And I'm like, well, yes, that is exactly the point of getting coaching badges, lads. Welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons with me, one hungry, hungry hippo. As always, of course, if you enjoy the series so far, smash the like button. You're doing a great job. Let's keep it going. So here we are. Brand new job. Seged 2011 Football Club. Oh, it feels happy to be here. Now, obviously, I recorded those episodes on Friday, so I've been not been able to touch this the whole weekend, and I've resisted like mad to sort of come in here and have a look and see what's actually going on at this club as far as the players, all sorts of jazz. So what we're going to be doing today, of course, is having a look through the squad ourselves, but also playing our first game in charge. Now, that is actually 42 days from now, uh, probably the weirdest uh, start to one of these that we've had so far. That's going to be a bit of a... We'll figure out what to do along the way. The main thing is, if you missed yesterday's episode, the club has money in the bank. I've never... That's the first time I've ever walked into a club and just looked at their bank balance and been like, yes, we, we can do good things here. But I also kind of wonder how that went down in real life. Imagine that, you just walk into the office, just like, right, I want to see the finance department immediately. And the accountants are like, hey, wait, who's he and why is he down here? I'm just loitering behind their monitors, looking at all the figures, being like, I don't understand any of this, but these are high numbers and that sounds good. So we're going to try and get coaching badges here. I don't know if we can do it straight away, but you can bet your ass I'm going to try. But for more information about the club, I thought we'd, instead of just me going to Google, we'd hear from an actual Hungarian who knows these things. So, Christian, great to see you manage your team in Hungary. The team is actually owned by the, bis the bishop of the region. Wow, this is some Crusader King shit. So God himself will be judging our work. Well, that's... Hang on, Regan Booty's not here yet. What are we saying? They were founded in 2011 to create a new senior team for an academy named after the legendary goalkeeper, Gira Grosic. Apologies for the butchering of the names. It's probably not going to get that much better. Maybe like 5%. They were recently given an 8,000-seater stadium by our government. Now, unfortunately, it's not in my stadium pack picture, but you should be seeing it on your screen now. Oh, my God. From where we've gone to where we are to be managing that is pretty damn sick. That stadium, I would live in it. And, frankly, we may have to at this rate. They haven't achieved anything, really, but Seged's other team have played in the first division. So, I'm excited to be here, to be honest. Um, so, I did point out as well that the, the lines on the logo, if you zoom right in, they're, they're a bit... Bit Tim Pot. I, I don't know what it is about the lions. They look like that meme of the thing, the, the guy doing the side eye. It, it's very, very strange. Suspicious lions. And even better news, it turns out that there are four nearby lakes. One of which is called Diving Lake, apparently. That's uh, a bad translation, I assume. However, that gives us plenty of opportunities for jet skis. So you can bet your ass that's what we're going to be doing for some team bonding. If you come back later in this video and find out we've got a hip injury, you know why. I can also just say, I I've been feeling kind of rough for the last week, for whatever reason. You know how it goes sometimes, you just do. And I, I woke up today, checked the comments before I started recording, and bloody hell, you the comments on last night's video were just so unbelievably nice that I was just a little bit overwhelmed by it, to be honest. So thank you. You're all lovely. And uh, that's enough of that, though. Let's go and have a look at this team, shall we? So I guess the first thing we should really do, uh, since we already... Screw it, should we try and get coaching badges right now? Just take the piss. We're not going to find out immediately anyway. But here's the situation. Let's, barely, let's check this out first, actually. Here is the situation. We are ninth in the league with 17 games to go. That's a lot of games. We could do a lot in that time. Now, really, you can see that the top two are somewhat sort of flying away from teams. In fact, I can't believe that teams like Uspest are actually in the second tier in this save. I swear these guys have won the Hungarian league like multiple times. And I think Pesci as well are a pretty solid team too. So I don't expect us to be going too high, but... If we take over and we do our usual sort of decent run for the rest of the season, I see no reason why we can't head towards... Let's just aim for a point a game straight off the bat to get to like 44, 40. I want to see if we can get to like 50 points this season. Now, where would that get us in previous seasons? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay, is it going to be one of those weird years again? Because it's starting to look like, okay, that's a bit more like it. Honestly, I think we just need to stabilize. Right, that's enough of that. Let's look at the squad. Come on, show me that squad. Ooh, oh, God, yes, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, so when we managed in Hungary on stream last year, we had all sorts of problems with the, the, the registration rules of the teams because of the non-EU thing. And there was all kinds of weird players that did and didn't count. Uh, luckily, I think it does tell you, which is good. And the fact they have actually none so far already, which is quite useful because it means we can bring them in. Uh, Regan Booty, looking at you, son. But I'm sure I'll figure out a way around it. Worry not. So in terms of average rate, I love that we've already got this information. Uh, who's that? Wow, he's underperforming like crazy, but he is only 18. Oh, this is exciting because that means he's probably a really highly rated young regen. He's basically Christu, isn't he? 
So best players currently at the club. There's Marco Juricic, whose name actually rings a bit of a bell, but I don't think he actually is a familiar player to me, who is a central midfielder slash defensive midfielder. I mean, he is rather good, isn't he, really? Um, he could be that kind of Mez kind of player that we're looking for. 1.2k a week, so not a massive money. We'll have a look at the money situation in a bit as well. Might be why they're doing so well financially. They've also got Albert Stahl, who is a right-sided winger. What's his passing like? Okay, okay. He could, I mean, obviously he's not perfect here, but he could definitely do a job in this wide position, should we need him to. Passing and vision aren't spectacular, but remember, we saw what Remy Fombatas was able to do, despite not being spectacular in that role. All right, let's check him out. Christoph Gretzko. Uh, sorry, no, Grexo. Grexo? Grexo. I'm going with Grexo for now. He is the striker of the team with poor finishing uh, as per, but wow, he has some really strange standout attributes. His composure is very good. His bravery is extremely good. Great passing. Well, not great passing, but technique, work rate, solid touch, dribbling, good stuff. He's not the quickest considering he's five for eight. He's got a weird mishmash of stuff, but I actually think he could still be quite fruitful. Now, he's five for eight, so we're not going to be expected to lump balls up to him. And he does technically only have four goals for the club so far, and he's somewhat underperformed his XG. But, hey, they've also got Christian Nandori on loan from, wow, okay, on loan from a Romanian side, who is a left-sided player. Left-footed, though. So, hmm, something we may have to look into there is an inside forward there, as we've seen how important it is to actually have a, left, a right footer in that role now. It doesn't always matter, but for this shape, it does seem to. There's also Laszlo Dutch, uh, a Hungarian left back. Oh, okay. Look at the tackling and the marking. Yes, please. Oh, wow. He's very David Dynamitey. I, I like him a lot. I'm a child. Like, I, I think we can all recognize when Javier Nobliars is a player that you've got in your team. They've also got Benz Gundel to catch, who is a goalkeeper. Okay, good. A goalkeeper called to catch. Excellent. To catch a ball. Attila Osvart. Okay, good right back to... Wow, their fullbacks are actually pretty sick. They've got decent... Not only like decent depth, but good quality in the fullbacks. Mateus Matris, which is excellent. Um, hope he's comfy. He is the slowest man in the history of the world, but in the air, looks like he's pretty solid. I'm just looking at squad depth here to actually see what we've got as far as centre-back options, because it is very likely that that is an area that is very much going to need some work i'd say oliver and z is one of the center backs uh decent again area elite struggles a bit in some of the technicals low aggression and low bravery and ivan yelich balta as well okay he's a bit more like it like he's not super slow solid in the tackle and the defensive sort of stuff good natural fitness as well six foot four with very low jumping reach weirdly uh which is kind of more important but still solid center back and also Akos Baki, who the game seems to reckon is quite good. Another, well, they've got a lot of tall boys. This is my perfect team, boys. Uh, so youth, well, we've got youth can. Wow, okay, hello. <laughs> what? What is going on here? Gabor Nagy. Oh, he's got four finishing. He's got four finishing. So you're many things. A striker is probably not one of them with your sixth composure and four finishing. He's more of a right-sided winger, isn't he, really? That's, that's what he is. And they've also got Ferenc Kovacevic as well. Great. Look at the first touch on him. Holy God. Um, sorry, the Bishopric. He is a very interesting player. I tell you what, he has Christu vibes about him. Um, certainly has a spirited personality. I like him quite a lot. There is a surprising amount of talent in our under-19 squad. I think in January, when we get there, because we're going to be doing a transfer window, essentially. Um, wow, what a, what a jump in episode. We're going to have to look... For someone potentially maybe just a really strong center back i don't know maybe an inside forward actually is probably more important than center back because we've got center backs already inside forward on that left hand side does look a bit of a weak spot with the system we play so i think that's probably going to be my main priority i don't want to spend too much money if at all none as far as transfer budget goes but i think that's where we must prioritize over this period so uh, what i'm going to do is get our tactics in uh, arrange some friendlies, play them, obviously. Uh, don't know if we need to watch them or not. I might have a look, see if some tactical stuff, and try to find an inside forward. So when we actually do play our first game in a minute, we'll actually have a team together, hopefully. That's the plan. Right, I'll see you guys in a sec. This team is a mess. Uh, you have no idea. Well, you're about to have an idea of just how much of a mess this team is. It's like, if it ain't one thing, it's another in terms of we come in, finances look good team looks solid uh, they were newly relegated which is causing all kinds of problems but my lord uh the players so the, the issue we've got is quite simple um there's a few players that are left over from the relegation season quite a lot in fact who desperate to leave are trying to make as much trouble for me as possible to the point where i've had two full team meetings uh where i've had one was 26 players and one was 23 players were on their side i did the whole you know they'll make us weaker but they weren't having it so essentially this time i've decided to go you know what fine you don't want to be here 
off your piss. Um, now, actually selling those players is a very different matter, but it's been a very, very difficult period for me. Now, I have brought in an inside forward, and I've got some players on trial as well, but because of the rules of the league, we're only allowed three non-EU players, and a lot of the trial and agent offers I've been getting are seemingly all from countries outside the EU, so it's been very difficult to find good quality players to bring in on trial, but we are very much going to need to do that. I did apply for a coaching badge. The team said no. <laughs> They said that they didn't want me to take coaching badges because they were afraid I'd use it to leave to another club. And I'm like, well, yes, that is exactly the point of getting coaching badges, lads. The only actual out that came out this window is Barnabas Horvath, who's gone out uh, on a transfer for £46,000. It's annoying because I actually quite liked him as a midfield backup, but it was another one of these situations where they just were desperate to leave. And I think we're going to just have to bite the bullet and hope for the best this season. Thankfully, the board don't seem to be judging us too heavily. So I think our best plan, like I said, is just muddle through the rest of the season, try to get some results going with the team. I'm hoping for that though, and then see where we end up and then overhaul this team entirely in the summer. That it's probably going to be one of the biggest transfer winners I've ever done on any save this summer. But I also did bring in a lone player. It's Andre uh, Blieda. Uh, Bleda? Bledia, uh, who's coming on loan from Vitoriol. And now, again, he's on relatively high wages, but we kind of had to get a loan deal in just for having a player that could play that role. And yeah, so we now have the guy for that role. I really do think that's going to make a difference. Um, weirdly, despite us playing a lot of the players week in, week out in the friendlies, they don't seem to be gaining any match fitness because I haven't been able to take that many players on trial. So it's strange that, and I think it is going to take us a little while to really bed in. So hopefully we can do that at least. But we love a challenge, don't we? That, that's the simple situation of the matter. So yeah, you can see that some of them have managed to gain a little bit of match fitness, but not a lot. So players that are desperate to leave. Sadly, the goalkeeper is one of them and Jelic Balta is the other. Uh, the two double barrel boys are pointing both barrels at me and uh, at the moment deciding that they would love to leave the club right now. So we do at least have some links at the club right now. Obviously, I'm, this isn't going to be the lineup I'm going to go with. I just want to have a little look. But it's nice to see that the guy that I highlighted from our youth team uh, is probably our best player in that role. And I'm very excited to see what he can do, given the chance. Baki will have to cover right back for now, but he's not actually the first choice that will play there long term. We've just got Osvart covering from a slight knock. Let me just get rid of the unavailable players. We can actually see Os. We do at least have a decent depth of squad, uh, but as you can see, Attila Osvart isn't quite ready yet to actually come in. But good average rating so far. Concerning that my system has no advice for me whatsoever, that's a bit of a shame, but I'll just do what I normally do when he doesn't give me any advice. This is not going to be easy. We're just going to have to do our best, but you can see that they are, they're, they're just a mess right now. As for the bench, I honestly don't even know who to put on the bench currently. Or maybe Gabon. And... Actually, no, we'll put one of the youngsters on the bench because I did promise the other lad. Okay, the players have reacted well to the team talk so far, though, which is a good sign. I think it's just going to take us bringing in our own lads, revitalizing this squad in the summer because at the moment, they are a mess. Uh, so many players that were a part of that season when they were relegated are just desperate to leave. And I think instead of fighting them like I would have done in the past, I just don't know if it's the right idea because the squad morale is already in the toilet. And if we can get rid of some of these bad eggs as soon as possible, then maybe that's for the best. But I would be a bit concerned if we came out here, for example, and lost like 5-0 uh, to a team who are basically bot. Wow, that's a great save from Takat. But as with any of these teams, it always takes us a little while to bed in, get the tactical familiarity up and stuff like that. So that, along with all the other factors involved right now, means that we are going to be in for a pretty rocky start, I sense. Uh, that's an aggressive tackle, and he somehow managed to not complete it anyway. Let's see a chance created. See if the new lad can blend. He's quite tall, actually, as well, isn't he? That's quite nice. I didn't even notice his height, really, when I was signing him. But he does look to have a bit of height advantage over most fullbacks, which could definitely give us an advantage at those back post crosses occasionally. Not that we're targeting that now. Um, Tolich, this is a bit more like it. Getting the ball under control. Starting to find some space in the midfield. It's obviously going to take players a little while to learn this, but here we go. Lovely ball. Jurisic! I've never seen a shot that seems less powerful than the pass that immediately preceded it. That's somewhat impressive there from Juricic, but at least we got in the right positions. Here we go. This is much more like it. Thank goodness. Can he find the right pass? He's going to shoot, isn't he? Oh, around the side for Bucky! Good. Wow, great strike from the centre-back come right back there. Not who I expected on the end of it, but hey, we'll take it. It's taken us a long while to get going, but we are now starting to turn the screw a little bit in this game, which is extremely refreshing. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ooh, a couple of little blocks thrown in there, but here we go. Greg Show now with the ball. Can he just drops it out wide? That's better. Might actually be able to get a counter-attacking play going. Just get to the box, lad. There you go. Gets inside, and that's a good tackle on him. And I'm actually surprised the penalty wasn't given. Maybe the refereeing standards will be better in Hungary. If we could get ahead right on the stroke of halftime, that would be make my halftime team took a lot easier. But Pantovic is through. It's a bit, yeah, relatively good defending there just to steer him out wide. And it's going to be nil-nil at halftime, I sense here. And it is indeed. Um, yeah, you can see we sort of struggled to get going initially, but have sort of come back into the match as the game's worn on slightly. But still not overly convinced yet, but it obviously will take time. To Durisic, okay, this is better. Oh, okay, he just stood there and let him take the ball off of him. Maybe don't do that next time, eh? 
I also wonder if the height of our striker might affect us a bit when we're playing like that, because that's not really something we could do anymore uh, with a more diminutive striker. Backy. Durisic. Okay, this is better. More, more space available. He's no rig and booty, but we'll take it right now. As Toth with the ball through, I am looking at rig and booty, don't worry, to potentially bring him in on a free in the summer. Oh, they're all over the shop. Pantovic is through here. And it's a great goal for Nikola Pantovic, and we are now losing. It's the first real sort of chance we've given them on the night. They caught us on the break, and it is 1-0 to Ilo. Um, Again, apologies for the pronunciations on teams right now. We just got caught there. Terrible play. We just didn't control the ball well enough when we got in that position. The centre-backs got really narrow for some reason. Uh, they almost both went to the same guy, and it allowed a lot of space for Pantovic, and now we trail. Ah, it's our first match in charge. We have to expect some teething troubles, but, you know, <laughs> imagine if we got sacked here uh, because we just couldn't get anything out of the team in this first half of a season. I'd like to think the board would give us enough of a chance beyond that. It's Pantovic again with another header now. Second half, we have had zero shots. Uh, in fact, not even... <sighs> Come on, lads, please. I need you to help me help you, all right? <laughs> okay, here we go. There'll be a chance here, and it's just cleared straight into the path of nobody. And I don't think we can really complain about losing it. If you go through the entire second half without having a shot, you're kind of asking for trouble at that point. Yeah, they really do not seem to have bedded into this system just yet at the moment. And it's somehow flicked onto Pantovic, and it's actually going to be another goal. I mean, the second half, it's like they went on strike at half time. That's how poor they've been for the second period of this match. Just the, the simplest little things. Just not being anywhere near where they're supposed to be to challenge for passes. And this one here, like he pulls out here. He should be massive favourite for that. And uh, well, it's a great finish from Pantovic. He's been excellent in today's game. And I think he was just mismatched horribly there. And we've just been very, 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 very poor today. Oh, well done. At least the keeper's sort of been okay in places. Not that he'll be here much longer if he carries on like this. But there we go. Uh, ball through the middle. And it's dropped to them. They've just been able to win every second ball today. Uh, the players seem to have had no desire to actually do anything. Um, we were pretty comfortable at half time, looking okay. But as the second half's worn, I mean, wow. I think that's hit the post as it goes. But, oh, it's um, it's going to be a tough one. But hey, we like a challenge, don't we? It's 2-0. We've just lost the 16th place away from home. And look, look at this. Oh, did they think it was a 45-minute match? Is that what? I'm putting it down to that. I think they thought it was a 45-minute game. And they all just went home at half time. Cheers, lads. I mean, let's be honest, it was always going to be a tough task coming in here. Uh, but I would have expected them to at least try. But hey, there's, they can try in the next game. They better bloody try in the next game is all I'm saying on that one. Oh my God, look what's going on down here. Hey, maybe we're going to win against them. When's our game against them? No, really, when's our game against them? Okay, later on in the season. So we've got a couple of home games up next against 9th and 15th. So mid-table games that we definitely should be starting to look a bit better in. But the games are coming thick and fast. There is a lot of fixtures at the moment, uh, particularly in February. It sort of calms down a bit once you get to March, April and May. So it's not ideal when you're trying to build a team when you have to rotate around because of, sus well, not suspensions, but like fitness issues, which we're going to have. It was always going to be a difficult task. And uh, yeah, it's proving to be exactly that right now. So yeah, next episode, hopefully we can try to turn this around a little bit and uh, get some form going. Because obviously, you know, we know the tactic has a solid base because we've had success with it in the past. And I know that going up through the leagues, we are going to have to make some changes to it. But I'm obviously not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater just yet over one game. I want to make sure that we get data. And we've got the rest of the season to essentially do that. So I don't want to make too many drastic changes just yet based on that alone. Particularly as I'm going to bring my own players in in the summer, you'd hope. <laughs> Depends. You might not have anyone left by that point. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode and you're looking forward to the full season or the full rest of the season here at Seged, then hey, drop a like on the video. That would be spectacular. If you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe. That'd be awesome too. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, so go follow that too. This might be the first, like, first, first game that we've lost with the save. I think we managed to win both the other two. So hey, it was bound to happen eventually, eh? I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.